Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday and welcome to this educational presentation. Now, today I want to share with you the entry rules to a strategy that's actually designed to catch volatile markets. Now, looking back in hindsight, many times you'll look at a stock and say, gosh, I wish I would have been able to know that this was going to go straight up or straight down. But how could I have gotten in at the beginning of that move? Well, let's take a uh, look at this uh, specific chart here. This is one in MAR. This is Marriott. Someone looking at this would say the same thing, saying, wow, this had a tremendous move, but I didn't know where to get in and I missed it. It's too late, right? Well, with today's method I'm going to share with you, the entry rules would have actually generated a buy signal right here and you could have potentially captured 28 points coming into the beginning of March. Now, this same method I'm going to share with you actually works to the downside as well. Here's a four hour chart of the euro dollar. OK, this was just a couple of weeks ago. And as you can see, looking back in hindsight, the euro dollar currency pair was going straight down. How could we have captured that? Well, with the entry rules I'll explain in full today, you would have generated a sell signal right here and still been able to potentially capture 110 pips. That's over a thousand dollars per unit in just a couple of days. And you'll see how simple it is to apply this method on our platform, the PTS Primo Charting Platform. I developed this with Pro Trader Strategies with one goal in mind, and that was simply to teach you how to trade. So this promises to be a great educational presentation today. Welcome once again. My name is Stephen Primo. I'm the president and founder of Specialist Trading. About 12 years ago, I teamed up with Pro Trader Strategies with one goal in mind, and that was simply to educate traders around the world. And I'm happy to say that we have students in over 115 countries and in every state in the United States. And we're teaching them all the things that I've accumulated in my 44 years of trading. And you believe it or not, I've been trading for over four decades now. I started my career on the floor of the Pacific Stock Exchange. I was on the floor for 16 years. In nine of those years, I was a specialist. So that's where we get the name specialist trading. Now, if you're not familiar with what a specialist is, it doesn't mean you're any more special than anyone else. It means that you specialize in making markets. So if anyone wanted to buy or sell a particular equity, the floor broker had to walk up to the trader who specialized in making a market. Roughly about 50 or 60 stocks, I, sp I specialized in making markets. Some of those stocks were IBM, US Air, Waste Management. So I made markets in uh, those stocks and others during the crash of 87 in the bull market. So in my 40 plus years of trading, I've seen just about every technique, every strategy, every system, anything that you think is probably brand new and exciting. It's been around before. All right. I've traded it most likely. It's just been rebranded, and renamed. So what we do is I share with all of our students around the world the things that I've seen that have high levels of consistency. So we've taken the hard work out for you. You don't have to go searching years and years the way I did for all the things that have levels of consistency. I'll show you what works and what doesn't. So that's what we do with Specialist Trading. We're first and foremost an educational company. You'll see that attention to detail in today's educational class. But before we begin, as always, we are required by law to share this with you. So please take a moment to view our disclaimer. I'm going to share with you a lot of performance results using this particular strategy today. But please remember that we can in no way guarantee that any of the results I'm about to share with you will be repeated in the future. Also, please remember that all examples, since we are an educational company, all examples are strictly for educational purposes only. Now, if you'd like to get more education on a daily basis, I invite each and every one of you to follow us on Twitter. We have a good crowd here today. I see a lot of new names here that uh, have never uh, seen me uh, speak before. So I invite you to follow us because uh, we, we post different information on a daily basis, anywhere from signals our strategies have just recently generated to little bits of financial wisdom. So there's lots of great free education on a daily basis. You may want to copy down that uh, handle right there for our Twitter page and feel free to follow us on Twitter. Now, remember, we are different from other webinars you may have attended. I, as I said, I see a lot of new faces today. Uh, I'm different from, since we are an educational company, I'm totally different from other webinars we're at, whereas I'm not going to tell you what I think the market's going to do. I'm not going to tell you what I think some stock or some future is going to do. I'm not going to tell you what I think of Bitcoin or I'll tell you what the perfect time frame is. First of all, I have no idea what those things are going to do. This goes entirely against our philosophy of teaching. You see, a good mentor does not trade for you. He does not tell you what to buy or what to sell. He does not spit out nightly signals. 
He does not tell you this is the stock you should be buying next week or this is the, what the market's going to be doing. That's not what a good mentor does. A good mentor teaches you how to trade so that you can ultimately make those decisions for yourself. In my 40 plus years of trading, from traders on the floor to traders I've taught, to traders I've known that are still trading, the only ones that have still survived, that are still trading, are the ones that make their own trading decisions not the ones that go to a nightly blog or a chat room or a trading room or the ones that wait for earnings or the ones that wait for, to see what the so-called trading gurus are saying on the TV. No, these people don't listen to any of that outside noise. What they do is focus on a plan that works for them and then stick with it, make their own trading decisions. This is the concept, this is the philosophy we're trying to instill in all of our students. You have to be responsible for your own trading destiny in order to become consistent. Sure, if you listen to some guy in a chat room and you have a couple of nice big winners here and there, sure, that'll feel great for a, a, a couple of days, maybe even a month, but most likely you'll give it all back. Think about it. If you've been going to a chat room or a trading room, how is it helping you? Most likely you're not very consistent with that, right? That's because you're not making your own decisions. What our goal is, is to teach you how to trade with the same edge that was taught to me when I was struggling when I first started trading on the floor, and what has sustained me. And it's based in simplicity and in making your own decisions. Now, I'm going to share with you the entry rules to a really, uh, I would say, one of our most consistent uh, trend-following strategies for capturing those big trends, okay? And I'm just going to share with you the basic format. Remember, we don't have systems that we teach a specialist trading. We just have basic formats, and then we work out from there with uh, I say more aggressive ways to trade, more conservative ways to trade, different ways to enter, different ways to exit, so that ultimately you can decide how you want to trade our methods and techniques, okay? Now, since this is an educational class today, please ask me as many questions as you'd like. I'm here to answer anything, but please wait till the end, okay? I, have a, I think I have about 160 slides today, or a lot of slides uh, I put together for you. So if we ask questions for every slide, many times we'll be here for two or three hours. I don't want to take up your Saturday morning. So please wait till the very end. Uh, the only question I will answer is this, and that is, is this being recorded? Yes, it is. We record all of our webinars, and everyone who attends our webinars gets a link to the recording. So if you have to leave early, if you're having technical issues, don't worry. Each and every one of you will be sent a link to this recording, all right? All right, so please, uh, once again, wait till the end to ask any questions. With that stated, let's begin today's educational class, and we're gonna be talking about strategy 3A. I've given presentations on this before. This is a very popular strategy. Uh, it's, a, it's very simple uh, to, uh, to construct and very simple to trade, but let me go over with the entry rules so that you can understand the basic concept of this. Some of the highlights of this, it's a continuation strategy. Now, if you're not familiar with what that means, there are basically two types of strategies. One is a pullback. Now, that means where you're looking for a nice uptrend and then you have a sell-off. In that sell-off, you look to buy at a lower range before it goes back up, right? Well, that's a pullback method. This is different in that a continuation method or a continuation strategy looks for an already established trend and it waits for some type of pause. That pause doesn't have to be in the form of a sell-off. The pause can be a one or two days or maybe a week, but it's more of a pause than a sell-off. And, and that pause is where we add a little structure. I'm going to share that with you today in today's uh, entry rules. And then it gets us back on board before it takes off again. This is a continuation strategy. The way we determine whether the trend is going to continue or not is through a unique Bollinger Band setting. Bollinger Bands are a very common and popular indicator. We're going to have a proprietary setting for this, which I usually reserve for the students who have paid good money for this course. I'm going to actually share this with you today and give it to you for free. Now, this is designed to trade these quick, powerful trends. Now, I'm not going to share with you all the rules. Remember, I can't tell you where to exit. I can't tell you where to place your stop because that wouldn't be fair to the, once again, the students around the world who have paid good money for this. But you can pretty much figure this out on your own if you've been trading for a while, and I'll, I'll give you a few ideas. Now, the beauty of strategy 3A is you can apply it to any market, any time frame, and any direction. The majority of the slides I'll share with you today are on stocks. But trust me, I use this on intraday e-mini future trading. We have Bitcoin traders that use this. We also have currency pair traders as well as commodity traders. With all of our methods, since you're getting the entry rules today, please, 
This is not a suggestion. This is a requirement. Paper trade first. When I've done this presentation in the past, uh, so many students say, hey, Steve, this doesn't work. Every trade I have is a loss. And, uh, you know, you, you gave me something that is really terrible. And then I'll ask them to send me a couple of examples of, of some of their trades. And I'll look and it's almost guaranteed that they're implementing the rules incorrectly. Why? Because they jump in too quickly. They didn't rehearse. They didn't practice. Virtually every career, every endeavor, you have a rehearsal or a practicing stage. OK, no athlete just goes on one day and just starts playing the game without any practice, without trying to get in shape. No actor or actress or a singer just one day records a, a, an album or a movie without rehearsing. You always have to rehearse and practice. That way you can you know, really fine tune what you're going to be doing. It's the same way with trading. You have to paper trade for us to fully understand the process. Our edge here is consistency. All right, so many webinars that I even have attended in classes before where, you know, the, these traders promise the world and they say, this never loses. It, it, it's got a 110% win uh, ratio. And it's just, we haven't had a loss in 20 years, okay? We don't believe in that concept. We believe that there's nothing wrong with having small losses from time to time. That's okay. In fact, it's perfectly normal. That's what consistency means. It's a two-step forward, one-step back process. So the one step back are the small minor losses you may accrue every once in a while. But with sound, proper money management and stop placement and position sizing, you'll be able to uh, sometimes recoup on the very next signal with many of our strategies and techniques. So our edge is consistency. Consistency is an awareness of losses, but oftentimes the method will be able to recoup those sooner than later. All right, so let's go and talk about Bollinger Bands. Many of you are totally familiar with Bollinger Bands R, but what we're gonna do is give you a brief refresher course for those of you who aren't familiar or have never really used Bollinger Bands. What they are is an indicator that has three lines or three bands, what they call it. The, the one in the middle is simply a moving average. It's a 20 period simple moving average. Now on top of that and below that moving average is what we have called the upper band and lower band. Now, I'm not gonna go really too deep into the inner workings of this indicator. I'm just gonna share with you, their setting is called the deviation. That's the, basically referring to the distance uh, the upper band is above the moving average and the lower band is below. And that's usually set as a two, okay? Now, so if you go whatever platform you're looking at right now, if you open up the uh, edit box for the Bollinger Band, you can see that the upper and lower band deviations are usually set at two. That's the standard format. And if you apply that to any chart, this is what it normally looks like, okay? That red line in the middle is a 20 period simple moving average. That's all it is. And the band on top is the upper band and the one below it is the lower band and they're set at a deviation of two. This is the standard way that Bollinger Band should look. Now we're going to alter that in our proprietary setting and we're gonna change it because this is going to tell us in terms of entering and how strong this trend actually is with strategy 3A. So here are the proprietary settings. We're gonna keep the moving average set at 20. So there's nothing you need to change. Uh, sometimes the uh, platforms say the length, others will say the middle moving average, or, or sometimes they'll say the middle line. Just keep it at 20. All we are changing with this proprietary setting are the upper and lower band deviation. In other words, the distance uh, calculation they are from the middle moving average. So we're going to go down to fractions, okay? Instead of having a two upper band deviation, we're going to go down to plus 0.382, okay? And instead of having a negative two or a lower band deviation, we're gonna go down to a fraction to negative 0.382. Now, I know a lot of you say, oh, well, this is a Fibonacci type of uh, uh, setting. This is, must be a Fibonacci uh, system or strategy. This is the way I was taught some four decades ago by my mentors. And I've tr tried, I say I've experimented with any number you can think of. And whether it's because it's Fibonacci or not, all that matters is that after all the research and editing and altering I've done of this number, this seems to work the best for capturing these moves. So feel free to experiment with this. Remember, we teach strategies, not systems. A system requires that everyone trade the exact same way every time so that you can come up with statistics. 
Remember, we don't believe in that. We want everyone to trade according to their own means. So this means if you'd like to alter or edit anything, that's fine. You want to change this to uh, uh, instead of 0.382 to 0.651, that's fine. But please experiment, research, and paper trade with it first. As long as you keep the standard format in place, that's fine. We encourage this, okay? We want you to find your own way. Now, as we look at this standard setting chart again, here's the way the normal setting for Bollinger Bands would appear on any chart. Once we apply our proprietary setting, it would look like this. I know a lot of you would say, well, that's just kind of like a moving average envelope. Why don't I just use that? Once again, I've traded with moving average envelopes, with Keltner channels, with different ways, and the setting for the Bollinger Bands seems to get the best results after testing this for decades, and not testing with statistics once again, just site view and for uh, signals I have taken. It's been my opinion that this works the best. So you can go ahead and experiment with Keltner channels, with moving average envelopes, in my opinion, you're not going to get the same results. Keep it with the Bollinger Bands and keep it with these proprietary settings. Remember, once again, this is going to be recorded, so don't feel as if you didn't get those settings down here. You know, I know a lot of you, the questions I'll get at the end. What are those settings again? I, I missed it. You'll get this recording. You can watch it at your own leisure. All right, so let's look at the entry rules. Remember, we can't give you the full course. In other words, what you're doing right now is walking into a restaurant, and I'm giving you a free appetizer, all right? But then imagine you had this really beautiful appetizer, it tastes delicious, and maybe I give you a free drink too. And then you say, can I have the uh, whole meal on the house as well? Can I have my dessert comped as well? <laughs> I'd say, I can't give you all of that for free. It would be fair to the rest of the people in the restaurant that paid for their meals. It's the same way with this. Every time I do this presentation, people love it so much. And they say, well, Steve, where are the exit rules? Where are the stop placement rules? Where are the money management rules? Those are all in the course. What I'm giving you today are simply the entry rules, which are actually the most important. And if you've been trading for anywhere for a couple of weeks to a couple of uh, uh, months, you'll be able to get a good idea of where you want to exit and where you want to protect the trade, all right? But these are just the entry rules. So let's look at for buy setups, okay? Let's say you want to go long a certain stock. Here's what you should be looking for. And remember, once again, this is all being recorded. Please do not worry if you didn't uh, uh, write these all down and say, oh, gosh, Steve, can you go back to those rules again? You can watch this recording later on today and, and look at them at your own pace, all right? All right, so step by step. Rule number one, plot the proprietary Bollinger Band setting on your chart. Remember, you must go into your edit box, whatever platform you're trading, click on Bollinger Bands, click on Edit, and change it to 0.382. So, let me share with you how simple it is on our platform. Everything is pre-formatted. So let's say we're looking at this right here. Most traders would say, well, okay, Steve, I don't want to really trade this because it's overbought. This is way too high. So I, I went to that chat room and they said I should actually sell it. So uh, I think I'm going to sell this because it's uh, all the indicators are overbought. And uh, that guy, he's never wrong, right? And so he's telling me that I should sell this, all right? Does that sound familiar? Is this the way you make your trading decisions? I know I did some four decades ago and it didn't work then. So I don't imagine it's going to start working now. Remember, most traders throw away all their decision making and they give it to someone else to do it for them. This is a recipe for disaster. Our goal as an educator is to provide you with this information so that you can make your own trading decisions. Now, the first thing we want to do is click on strategy 3A. Okay. In the drop down menu, we'll click on indicator which is the pre-formatted Bollinger Band setting. And as you can see, price is above. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that the overall trend is actually up. So we don't want to sell anything. Sure, we may have a couple of days sell off, but that's okay. We don't want to look at this in terms of a shorting opportunity. We're actually looking for buying opportunities. Why? Because we're above the highest Bollinger Band setting. So this brings us to step two. We want to look for five consecutive price bars, consecutive, meaning in a row, five consecutive price bars that close either on or above that highest Bollinger Band. So if we go back to the chart once again, here's the highest Bollinger Band. All right, so we have one here, two, three, four. Okay, we have five consecutive bars closing above. All right, so that requirement is met. Let's go to the next step, step number three. We're going to enter to buy when price trades one tick above bar number five. 
Now you notice I didn't say when price closes above bar number five, it doesn't have to close there. All it has to do is trade above the high of bar number five intraday. So if we go back and we see this is bar number five right here, right? So we wanna buy if price trades right here. Now it can trade on the next bar. It can trade two, three bars later. Here's the only caveat. If it doesn't trade on the next bar and you wait and price starts to come down, that's okay. But if the price bar, let's say a week later, closes below this highest Bollinger Band, we would suggest negating the trade. Why? Because the market's telling you that most likely it's run out of energy. It's run out of that momentum. And most likely it's not gonna have a nice strong trend. Remember, we're trying to catch these real strong, powerful trends. So it's okay if it doesn't trade there on the next bar. If it waits two, three days, even if it waits a month, that's okay. It must be a, a, above this highest Bollinger Band. It has to close above. If once it closes below, negate the trade. So we're lucky to see that on the next trade, it doesn't trade there, but we're still seeing that it's above. And then here it does. And you notice we didn't buy here on the close. The minute it traded one tick above, that's where we entered. And a nice 115 points in the next week or so, okay? See how simple this is? Now, do you notice that I didn't bring up anything about the earnings? I don't follow earnings. I stopped looking at earnings reports some four decades ago, and I'm still here trading. You notice I didn't say that you had to go to a chat room or trading room to get this signal? No, we don't have chat rooms or trading rooms at Specialist Trading. We don't believe in those things. Once again, that would be taking you out of the game and making a crutch for you to decide what to buy or sell. So we don't believe in those. You notice I didn't mention anything about the institutions or the momentum of the overbought, oversold. I don't believe in those things. I've already traded all of those things decades ago. They don't work in terms of consistency. I'm trying to save you that time and effort and most especially your hard earned money wasting on these things that really have no levels of consistency. The price and the chart in front of you tells you just about everything you need to know. There's no reason to overcomplicate your trading. Now this was a buy setup. Let's look at the entry rules for going short. We have a lot of traders that like to buy puts or go short uh, the actual stock. It's up to you, but they're the same rules. We're just gonna turn them upside down. Obviously plot the proprietary Bollinger Band setting. All right, here's a example of a downward market. Now someone would say, hey, look at we're going down and this is a reversal, right? That's major support. In fact, Steve, I took that $10,000 class uh, with that big company where they talk about the institutions and the institutions are buying here. So this is major support. I mean, you used to work on the floor. After all, you don't want to go against the institutions, right? They're always right. Well, just my own opinion. I traded with the institutions, okay? Remember, I, they were, I was taking their orders on the floor and they, in my opinion, had the worst track records of most traders I'd ever seen. They were almost always wrong. The only reason they're still there is because they have the big bucks behind them. I would never rely on what the institutions are doing. So their turn, you know, their actions in terms of support are, you know, in my opinion, once again, a very inconsistent way to follow the markets. And once again, relying on someone or something else to make your decisions for you. I'm only going to rely on what the market's telling me. And the easiest way to do that is to click on strategy 3A, click on the indicator, which is our preset format for the Bollinger Band, and you see there that price is below. So this is telling you the trend is down. I don't wanna buy anything if the trend is down. Now, let's go on to step number two. We wanna identify five consecutive price bars that close either on or below that lowest Bollinger Band. So it's just the opposite of a buy setup. Here is the lower Bollinger Band right here. And we wanna find five that close below that. So we have one, two, three, four, five closes below. So we have a proper setup here. We're not gonna sell yet, but we have a setup. But we have to add a little more structure and that's in step number three. We wanna enter to sell when price trades one tick below bar five. This is our confirmation that it's going to be going lower. So here's bar number five. So we wanna place some type of line here on our chart or just somewhere to let us know that this is where we're gonna go short. Doesn't have to close below there. All it has to do is trade there, all right? And as you can see, we waited a couple of bars. It went up the next day, went up again, but we never closed above. So that 
means we didn't have to negate the setup. We held on for a couple of days and finally got short. And as you notice, we got short and it closed up. This is where students always email me and say, Steve, this doesn't work. I sold and I'm losing money already. Well, yeah, it's like you have to wait for the, the uh, you know, the, the trade to unfold. Had you gotten out with a loss and emailed me and said, Steve, this doesn't work. This is a bunch of baloney here. Well, you would have missed a nice 45 point run to the downside. OK, now that's potentially what you could have captured. Remember, in the course, we give you upwards of six or seven different ways to exit. So potentially you could have captured 45. Now, what happens when the trend changes? A lot of students say, well, Steve, that's great. But look what happened. And then I gave back everything. Well. Even if you didn't get out, I mean, I know I would have taken a profit if I had 45 points in my favor. Somewhere I would have at least taken some profit. But when we start to oscillate back and forth within the uh, Bollinger Band setting, look what happened again. Now we start to have price closing above. In fact, we have five consecutive price bars. So what is the market telling me? I don't have to go to a chat room. I don't have to listen to a guy on TV. I only have to look at the market. And right now it's saying, I have five consecutive bars closing above. I'm setting up to go long right here if I trade above there. So now if you're still short, you could stop and reverse. You would have bought here on the opening if you decide to do so, but that's still 25 potential points you could have made in about three days. You see, when you learn how to listen to the market, trading is a lot simpler. All right. The reason why most traders fail is because we take our, you know, we, we give our power away to someone else and we don't rely on what we're looking at, you know, 24 seven, which is the chart in front of us. We rely on some earnings report. We rely on some economic condition. We rely on some guy on TV. Learn to rely on the chart in front of you. And that's how you become consistent. All right. So let's look at some examples. OK. I have a lot of current examples. Some go back a month or so. Some go back the last week. All right, here's an example in play. All right, Dave and Buster's Entertainment. Looking back in November, coming into the beginning of this year, some of us say, wow, I wish I would have known to get long, you know, when the stock was at the bottom there, because, but who, who would have known? I mean, how, how would we know? It's, it's always the victim attitude that traders like to have. As long as I've been trading from being on the floor, uh, when I first started out, traders love to play the victim role. They love to say, gosh, you know, I was looking at this stock, but I didn't do anything. And this guy told me not to buy it or the system said to buy something else. And I didn't get involved and I missed this. OK, that's one of the main reasons why traders like to give their power away and let someone else make the decisions, because when it doesn't work out, which is most likely most of the time, you can blame someone. And that always gives you an out. You never have to take responsibility. You can always blame that $10,000 course you took. You can always blame that the earnings reports. You can always blame some guy on TV, but you never take responsibility. When you start to make your own decisions, you have to take responsibility for your trades. Here's the good news though. If you're learning how to listen to the market, you'll be glad to take responsibility because you'll have a consistent nature to your trading now. And you'll know that no one else told you to buy something. No one else told you to tell something. You did it all by yourself. So you'll want to take responsibility because it's you who is being consistent. So how could we have taken advantage of this and not played the victim role? Well, remember, first thing we want to do is click on strategy 3A in hindsight, click on indicator. And we see going all the way back to November while we were oscillating inside the Bollinger Band setting. What do we have here? One, two, three, four five bars above. So had we placed just above bar number five at entry level, we would have entered right here in mid-November and potentially captured 25 points if we decided to hold on that long coming into this past week. All right. See how simple that is. All I did was apply one or two pieces of structure and then you just basically entered. Now remember, I know a lot of you are saying, well, gosh, this is great. Well, where do I get out? Where do I place my stop? That's all in the course. We have six or seven different ways to place your stop. If you want to be more conservative, if you're more aggressive, if you like to take on more risk or less risk, we have all those for you to choose from. Remember, you're going to decide. We also have six or seven different ways to exit. If you like to stay in for as long as possible, if you like to get in and out quickly, we have all those already for you as well. It's you who has to decide. That's how you become consistent. 
Let's look at this example now in Rive, okay? This is coming into this past week. Looking back in hindsight, how could we have taken advantage of this downward move, all right? It's not a very expensive stock, but how could we have taken advantage of it? Well, let's go through the process. Apply strategy 3A, process of clicking on the indicator. That will tell us whether we should sell or buy, and we knew right here after one, two, three, four, five closes below that the market was telling us in February, mid-February, that most likely it's going lower. So if you were long this already, that was a good sign to get out. But if you wanted to go short, well, you place an entry just below bar number five and right here. Had you gone short, well, potentially could have captured seven more points to the downside coming into this past week, okay? Some more examples here. Let's look at MAR. Remember we talked about that? This was the opening slide I shared with you. Well, how could we have captured some of this big volatile move? We apply the Bollinger Band setting. We look for five bars that close above right here. We enter above bar number five, 28 points in just a couple of weeks. This was in uh, February, coming into March. How about PLUG, plug, okay? This is plug power. Someone would say, well, Steve, once again, what happens when the trend changes? You know, what if I give all my money back? Well, we, you know, once again, we teach you exit levels. We also teach you stop placements, how to track your trade if you'd like. But if you wanted to take advantage of this up and then down move, well, the first thing you do is apply the Bollinger Bands. As you see here, we want to look for five bars above. They're right here because we had one, two, three, four, and look what happened to bar number five. It closed in the realm of the Bollinger Band. So this is negated. This setup is negated. And we wait for it to happen again. One, two, three, four, five. And someone would say, but Steve, now I'm buying much higher. That's true. But remember, it's not about how low you're going to buy and how high you're going to sell. It's about getting in at the beginning of a big move. Remember, we're trying to be a consistent trader. We're trying to instill that in all of our students. That has nothing to do with buying at the bottom and selling at the top. That's a gambling mentality. And if you're interested in that, most likely you're going to give everything back because gamblers look for that rush, that big score, that big hit. And with taking on that type of mindset, that's where you can give it away. That's what happens with gamblers. But with professional, consistent traders, they look for high probability setups. They don't care how high or how low they're buying or selling. They just want to get in and have a consistent trade. So if we enter it above bar number five, well, we would have entered on the gap up right here. Now, someone would say, but Steve, look at nothing happened for a week and I would be stopped out. Well, depending on where you place your stop, all right? We have a number of different stops. But most likely, using this format, the standard format, you would not have been stopped out and you had 40 potential points to take advantage of. Now, when the trend changed, we look now for five closes below. They're right here. Here's bar number five. This was coming into this month. You could have sold here. And if you would have entered actually on that gap down, you still could have potentially captured 22 points coming into just a week or so ago. Here's an example in Boeing. All right, Boeing's had a big upward move in the last week or so. How could we have taken advantage of this? I don't care what the fundamental news is in Boeing. I told you, I stopped looking at fundamental news four decades ago. And if I'm still here and I can still trade, then don't you think that I'm living proof that it really isn't required. So if you want to look at fundamental news and you feel you can't cut the umbilical cord, then by all means, go ahead. I mean, we're not here to tell you that you shouldn't do something. We're just here to tell you that there's no consistency in that. How many times have you looked at fundamental news and it looks terrible and the stock or future or currency pair of the market goes up, right? Or how many times it's great news and it goes down? That's not consistent. We're looking for things that are cut and dry, like five closes above the highest Bollinger Band right here. That's consistent. This closed right on it, so that still counts. Remember, either on or above. So we have five right here. We would have bought above bar number five, and in the next, uh, I'd say, month, we could have potentially captured 60 points. That was coming into last week. Let's look at Costco, okay? to the downside, all right? How could we have taken advantage of this big move to the downside before it even looked like it was going to take place? Well, the market was telling us well in advance. We had a close below, but then we closed back above. So there's no count here. Then we had continuation of closes below. One, two, three, four, five closes below. So this is our setup. We have a setup to go short. You could have placed your entry right below that, maybe bought some puts, 
54 points coming into a few weeks ago to the downside. Now let's look at some other markets and time frames because not everyone just trades daily bars of stocks. Let's look at uh, let's look at a weekly bar. Okay, this is of uh, Micron Technology. This is a weekly bar going back to September 2020. Not even a year ago, but still going back some time. We see in hindsight that this has had a really nice upward move. How could we have taken advantage of this? Go through the process once again. First thing is click on Strategy 3A. Click on Indicator. Looking back in hindsight, we knew well in advance back here in October, November, that we had five consecutive closes above. One, two, three, four, five. Now, these are all weekly bars, but nothing changes just because we're looking at a different time frame. So in the first week of November, we could have known to go long right here on the opening of that first week and potentially captured 40 points to the upside. If we wanted to hold on, we still could or gotten out with some profit potentially captured 40 points coming into a few weeks ago. Now remember, I know a lot of you are saying, well, Steve, that means I would have had to enter and get out exactly at 40 points. No, we're not saying that. We're saying, we're not saying you would have made 40 points. We're saying potentially you had 40 points to work for. Let's say you didn't get out at 40 points, maybe only half of that. All right, so you still made 20 points. I mean, are you going to complain with 20 points in a couple of months? Let's say you made a third of that. Okay, so you made maybe uh, 13 points. Are you going to complain with a 13-point profit? This is, you know, what traders love to do. They always want to get in at the bottom and at the top. But professional traders, consistent traders, just look for consistency. All right, here's an ETF for gold. All right, This is GLD, the ETF that represents gold. Now, looking back in hindsight, gold has been going down since the beginning of the year, 2021 in January. How could we have taken advantage of this downward move? Let's say we were even long in gold. Where would we have gotten out? Go through the same process. Click on 3A. And in hindsight, once we apply the indicator, we knew back here in the second or third week of January to get out of gold. Why? Because we had five consecutive closes below. Now, if we wanted to short gold, well, we could have taken advantage of it right here. And in this ETF, made 15 points to the downside coming into a week or so ago. A totally different market is the four hour euro dollar. Okay, I showed this in the beginning of the presentation. Looking back in hindsight, traders who love to play the victim say, Gosh, I missed this whole downward move in the euro dollar. But nothing, you know, the guy I go to in the trading room didn't say anything about short. In fact, he said it was oversold that I should buy it. Uh, so I lost a lot of money listening to that guy, all right? Once again, this is the way most traders trade, and this is one of the reasons why most traders fail. You're giving your power away. We don't believe in chat rooms or trading rooms. They go entirely against our concept of teaching, our philosophy, because the student will make that into a crutch and think, well, this guy knows everything he's talking about, so I guess I should do the same thing. Right? That is, a, once again, a recipe for disaster. The only way one becomes consistent is by learning, is by being educated, sticking to things that work, and then making your own decisions. Now, happy to say that you've learned an entry technique today, because looking back at this in hindsight, if you are a currency pair trader, you could have applied the Bollinger Band setting. And you see that nothing much was happening here just a, a couple of weeks ago, beginning of March. And then right here, on the 4th of March, here we have one, two, three, four, five closes below. Now, right where that guy in that chat room was telling you it's oversold, you've got to buy this. This is where you had a five bar count to the downside. And you're, now that you have the education, you can make your own decisions. You're saying, I'm not going to listen to that because the market's telling me the only thing I do listen to, it's telling me it wants to go lower. There's a high probability setup. All you had to do was go short once price traded one pip below. And look at that. In three days, you still could have potentially captured up to 110 pips. That's over $1,000 per unit. Now, let's look at the market I trade. Here's a five-minute chart of the E-mini futures. This is just going back to this past Monday. You see, we had a really nice run-up in the E-mini futures, and then all of a sudden, it was met by some type of ceiling, and we went straight down. Okay? This is where traders usually have trouble because they'll see it go straight up and they'll say, okay, I've got a short. This is way too overbought. It's way, it's way too high. It's going and hitting all this resistance. You short, you short, and at this time you say, I can't take this loss anymore. I'm going to get out. And right when you get out, this will go straight down. And now at this point, 
you start saying to yourself, well, it's gone down too far. Now it's oversold, so I'm going to start buying it. And then you buy, and then it keeps going lower, right? Sound familiar, right? I used to trade this way, so I know exactly what that feels like and sounds like. And it's always, you, you don't understand why the things you've been taught that are supposed to work don't work. Sure, they work every once in a while, but overall, they're handing you a bunch of losses. Well, it's because they're not consistent. There's no consistency in those things. Why, not we, why don't we focus on what is consistent? And that's the strategy. We apply the Bollinger Band setting, and we see here that once we had five closes above, well, this was our cue to go long. You could have entered right here and potentially captured 15 points, all right? Now, when the market decided to change and started to oscillate within the realm of the Bollinger Band, now we look for five closes below. So we have one, two, but look at this bar. We closed above, so the count, the countdown's negated. And now we start over again. One, two, three, four, five. Now this is valid. So we have five closes below. We're entering right here, and we entered on the next bar, and potentially we could have captured 13 points. So potentially, just last Monday, you could have captured upward of 28 points, which is about $1,400 per contract in one day. Now, I'm not saying you would have, because that would have required you to get in and get out the top or out at the bottom. So let's say you only captured half of that, okay? Instead of 28, you, you captured 14, okay? That's $700 still in one day. That's not a bad day of trading, right? This is just off one example. Okay, let's recap before we go into question and answer portion. Strategy three highlights, it's a continuation method. Remember, we're not concerned about buying at lower prices. We don't care if we buy at the high because the method is telling us most likely there's more room for it to go higher. Same thing with selling. You just saw in the e-mini future, we sold as it made a new short-term low, and then it went down another 13 points, all right? It does this by applying a unique Bollinger Band setting, which I shared with you today, designed to trade these quick, powerful trends. You can apply it to any market, any time frame, in any direction. I just shared with you stocks, futures, currency pairs, uh, uh, ETFs, weekly bars. Please, I know a lot of you, your eyes are lighting up right now. You're probably looking at charts where you could have applied this right now as I'm speaking. Please. Paper trade this first. I use this, it's a great method, but if I had used it when I first started uh, seeing how it worked and just jumped in, I most likely would have lost tremendously. And so I don't want you to do that. I want you to paper trade first so that you fully understand the process. The edge here with this method and with all of our methods is consistency. Consistency is an awareness that you will have losses. That's okay. But a consistent method is one that's able to recoup those losses. So. Ask yourself, do you think this strategy could have helped your trading this past year? We're already into the first quarter of 2021. Do you think it can help you going forward? Well, I think your answer is a resounding yes. So we have a great special offer for all of you taking time out of your Saturday morning. We're going to offer you the Strategy 3A course at a great discount. Okay, This is our premier continuation method. You're going to get the proprietary entry technique along with all the other entries, exits, and stop placement complete strategy 3A courses. But we're not going to stop there, okay? We're going to also throw in a completely different method, our strategy number one course. Now, this is an entirely different strategy based on entirely different rules. Why? Because it's a pullback method. A pullback method is entirely different than strategy 3A because that's a, a continuation method. Remember, a pullback method, if you're buying, looks for price to sell off so that you can buy at lower levels and then it will resume its upward trend. The same way to the downside, it looks for price to rally and bounce so that you can sell at higher levels. Completely different rules here. Let me share with you an older example here in the spiders. Someone looking at this would say, well, wow, Steve, this broke down. Look at all the down days, closes here, and I think we're in a downtrend, so I'm gonna stay away from this. In fact, I'm gonna short it, right? Because you always say to go with the trend. Well, remember, this has completely different parameters because strategy number one would have actually generated a buy signal here. This is just a pullback or a sell-off in an overall uptrend. Had you bought there, you would have bought at the very bottom and been able to capture eight points. Now, I know a lot of you would say, well, Steve, with this volatility, eight points isn't anything, but that represented close to 700 Dow Jones points because the spiders are the ETF for the S&P 500. And you can use this as a directional tool. It's a great, great method. It's our premier 
pullback strategy. You'll get this included with all the rules for entries, exits, and stuff, the complete course rules. And you can apply once again to any market, any time frame, and any direction. But we have some more bonuses for you. All right. We're not going to just stop there. We're also going to throw in seven Saturday morning bonuses. All right. You're going to get the add ons for both strategy one and three A. This means that if you have one of the most popular platforms like TradeStation, Metastock, Sierra Charts, Ninja Trader, you'll get an add on that generates the up and down arrows for this strategy. That usually is a $1,900 value. Bonus number two, you'll get our full Secrets of a Stock Sustaining Specialist course. This is a three hour video seminar. Years ago, I was asked to be the head speaker at a conference and I spoke for three hours. It's recorded. And so you'll get that full recording of the presentation. That's a thousand dollar value. You'll also get bonus number three, the PDF version of my book. All right, I wrote a book where I go into detail on what it was like to actually trade on the floor during the crash of 1987. It's a trade by trade account of me trading on the floor. That's a $99 value. We'll throw that in for the PDF version. Bonus number four, six months of the platform. I'm going to go into that in just a few minutes. Let's go on to bonus number five. This is our Secrets 2.0 course, roughly valued at close to $1,000. Here's where we take a lot of the uh, things we talked about in our first hour course, the, our three hour course, I should say, where we take it up a notch for more advanced trading. Bonus number six and seven are very similar, but they're very powerful. They're scanners on the platform. So let me go back to bonus number four here, okay? This is worth its weight in gold, in my opinion. You're getting six months of our platform that not only comes with uh, the, the strategies we talked about, but so many extra bonuses because it's designed to teach traders how to trade. For example, you'll get the strategies. That's the up and down arrows. You'll also get our strength of trend tool. Now, that's a tool I devised with ProTrader Strategies that has an uncanny ability to let you know when a, a trend is running out of steam or not. You also get our enhanced buy sell line. These are four different features to tell you what the overall trend is. You'll get our top bottom 25% tool, another tool based on uh, uh, pattern recognition and market behavior to tell you what the short term trend is. All right. Auto generated exit levels. You'll get all of this included. So it automatically tells you where the exit levels are for just one of our proprietary methods. And this all comes with personalized tech support. If you ever have any difficulty loading up a chart or watching uh, a video or anything, the tech support will be there in a matter of moments to resolve any issue that you may have. So this is great. And, and remember, all the indicators and everything on our course is already pre-formatted. So you don't have to go into uh, TradeStation or Metastock and alter uh, you know, Bollinger Bands or the other indicators we use in the other strategies. It's already pre-formatted. It's one click away. Think of it. Over four decades of information, strategies, and techniques that I've accumulated, one click away for you. All right, this is a great learning tool, and I'm really proud of how we developed it and used it. This is the educational platform we strongly feel that you've been searching for. That's how valuable this is. So let's break this down. We're going to offer you Strategy 3A, all right, what we talked about today, all the full course rules. Also included with that, Strategy 1, the complete course rules to a, a different strategy entirely based on different parameters. We're going to give you those seven extra bonuses, which includes six months free of the platform. Now, normally, this would cost you close to $72.48, all right? We're going to discount this tremendously, and for a very limited time, less than $300. Less than $300, you're going to get all of this. This includes the PDF version of my book. That's a nearly $7,000 worth in savings, okay? But this is for a limited time only. This is our Saturday morning special. We change this every week. So trust me, if you watch the video today and you say to yourself, well, I'm not really convinced yet. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. And then two weeks later, you decide to take advantage of this. Most likely, it'll be all the way back up to over $7,000. Now, if you're not convinced yet, if you don't think that four decades plus of information and strategies and techniques I've accumulated can help you, take a look at this. Here's a chart in VIAC. This is Viacom. Using the same technique I shared with you, this was at the beginning of the year, not even three months ago. You could have taken advantage of this. Looking at this right now, it looks like nothing is actually happening, right? Just kind of going sideways. We apply the process and apply the Bollinger Bands. And it's, I know it's a little difficult to see here, but what do we have? Coming into January, we had five closes above. All we wanted to do was enter right here. This was the first week of January, not even three months ago. Had you entered right there on the first week? Well, coming into this last week, 
In Viacom, you could have potentially captured 60 points. This is how simple trading can be. So as we always say, you owe it to yourself to become a student because a year from today, you will have wished you became a member of these courses. You know, invest in yourself, not in some guy in a chat room, not in some guy on TV, not in some institutional course. Invest in yourself. Learn how to become a student of the market. Take advantage of this deeply discounted offer. Here's how to do that. Contact Pro Trader Strategies. They're my sister site. They're in charge of all the discounts. I would strongly suggest calling them directly at area code 310-598-6677. They have trading consultants manning the phones. They'll be more than happy to, to work with you, take your order over the phone or answer any questions concerning the platform, anything of that nature. They're very helpful. There's absolutely no obligation and they're there manning the phones right now. Now, I promised you I would take any question that you may have. Oh, first of all, see that link at the very bottom? If you'd like to sign up online, you can go to that link right there, but it's not live, but a live link has just been posted in the chat box. So all you have to do is go to the chat box in the go to webinar column there in the far right, and you can uh, click on that live link there, okay? Now, uh, if you have any questions concerning what I went over today, all you have to do is go to your uh, question and answer box, type them in. I promise I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Okay, question here. What is the lowest time frame you would feel comfortable trading this strategy? Well, that's a very good uh, question because I've always stated the lower time frame you go, and take it from someone who's a, basically I'm a, I'm a day trader. I like to intraday trade because that's my, my background. When I traded on the floor, you know, many times I held a position for two or three minutes and I, I was out. So my background is in day trading and in small time frames. Uh, with any strategy, this one included, the smaller the time frame, from a 10 to a five minute to a one minute to a tick bar chart, that's where you're gonna get the more noise. It's just natural, it just stands to reason. And I don't care if it's one of my strategies, it could be something else that you've developed, it could be from another educator. So just be aware that the smaller time frame, I would say, more than worrying about what the smallest or time frame I would use is, I would say it's more about learning the strategy first. So I would say do not learn on anything less than a five minute time frame. And then once you fully understand that, then experiment with yourself, maybe going down to a one minute time frame. The one thing I will tell you is that when the markets are basically in a holding pattern, and this can be you know on a daily basis, let's say you have this tremendous volatility in the first uh, hour or two of the day. And then as we all know, coming into about the third or fourth hour, markets start to go sideways or they dry up. Well, that's where you want to stay out of any intraday trading, all right? And then when volatility kicks up again, well, guess what? You could, if it's strong enough, where we see some really strong up moves or strong down moves, you can use this on a tick bar chart because that's when you have this current, the, this nice uh, strong momentum at your back. Whereas when the markets are going sideways, that's where you get a lot of whipsaws, okay? An hourly chart is fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with an hourly chart, but, but once again, the stronger the momentum that you see in a lot of moves, that's where this will work the best. But experiment first, but there's nothing. We have students trading this on a five minute time frame. We also have students using this on a weekly time frame. An hourly is perfectly admissible. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Uh, someone is saying on your promo, it said educational correspondence. What is that? That's a good question. With every strategy, or I should say, anytime you become a student of mine, I don't care if you buy this or if you buy one of our more advanced methods, you will get uh, uh, your, my uh, private email address. You'll have access to that. You can contact me whenever you'd like. Uh, I'm always answering emails. I was answering some this morning. I answer them on the weekends before the market opens, sometimes after the market closed. So, I always take them in the order they were presented. If it's a slow day and I only get one or two emails, you'll probably get an answer in the next few minutes. If it's a very busy day and I have maybe upwards of 20 or 30 emails, I have to answer them in the order they were received. So oftentimes it'll take probably about a day or 24 hours, but you will get an answer from me, okay? So that's the educational correspondence. My, my personal email address, you can contact me whenever you'd like. It doesn't matter if it's a weekend or the middle of the night. We have students all over the world, so I get emails at two o'clock in the morning, my time, so it makes no difference, okay? So, uh, and remember, once you become a student of mine, you're a student for life, so it doesn't just even have to pertain to this particular method. You can ask me something about uh, another method or another idea, but please don't ask me what I think a stock or the market's going to do, because remember, that goes against our, 
our philosophy. I would never, personally, I don't even know. I, I'm looking at the market now, I have no idea what's going to do. And that's the way you should be looking at the market. You should never try to predict what a market or a stock or future is going to do. You, as a trader, are only required to listen to it and to find out what it wants to do and then jump on board. You should never predict what you think a market's going to do. If the market wants to go higher, then you're a buyer. If the market wants to go lower, then you're a seller. But you should never say, well, I think it's going to stop right here or bottom out. I mean, that's, once again, a gambling mentality. Uh, and we, uh, you know, never want to have our students become uh, or have a gambling mentality because that will lead to inconsistency, okay? Uh, last question, what are the platforms you can apply this to? Okay, uh, you can apply them to most of the major platforms like TradeStation, Metastock, MT4, Sierra Charts, NinjaTrader. You can apply it with Thinkorswim, but there's a couple of edits and alterations you have to make because of the way they're set up. And uh, our tech support will take care of that for you though. But the, here's the good thing, the tech support does everything for you. So there's really not a lot of work on your part. Um, can you contrast this with the buy sell line strategy? Well, the buy sell line, firstly, is not a strategy. It's just a tool to tell you what side of the market to be on. So the buy sell line tells you whether you should be looking at the market from a longer uh, uh, trend point of view to be uh, on the buy side or an overall trend to the downside. But that's all that is. This is just a, uh, the, the uh, I should say the buy sell line is just basically an indicator telling you what side of the fence to be on for the overall trend. Strategy 3A is a strategy uh, all by itself. It's telling you where to enter, where to exit, where to place your stop, and it's giving you different variables for that. So they're, they're completely different, uh, different things. And, um, and this is all taught in the course too though. Remember, we teach you things to help you become a consistent trader. We don't say this is going to uh, tell you where the market will top, and this is gonna tell you where the market will bottom. That is a recipe for disaster. If anyone tells you that, I would run. And if you don't believe me, remember, I've been trading for 44 years now. Almost everything that you've relied on and used in the past, I've already used. So I can tell you, I mean, they, you know, they're not really going to help you in the long run. And if you decide to become a student of mine or not, that's okay. And we're not going to force anyone to do that. But do your own research. Go back and look and look at your trades and see how well those things work. Most likely they didn't. So uh, do yourself a favor and only focus on things that work. They don't even have to be mine. They can be someone else's. But that's, as a true educator, we're not competing with anyone. We're just trying to get you to become consistent traders because there's more than enough for everyone to go around. Don't ever look at the markets as if, as if it's a finite source of profits and that's all. There are an infinite source of profits on a daily basis. You never have to compete with anyone. The only person you should compete with is yourself, okay? Now, with that said, remember, give Pro Trader Strategies a call. They'll be more than happy to answer any question. And if you're sold, if you want to take advantage of that really deep discounted price of less than $300, contact them. You can place your order on, over the phone right now on the phone, and they would be more than happy. They can also answer any question that you may have, okay? As we close here and take one last look at our disclaimer, I want to thank you all for taking time out of your Saturday morning to join us this morning. And I look forward to all of you taking advantage of that Strategy 3A discount. And I look forward to all of you becoming students of mine. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.